It's matter. I'll take you for a walk in a minute, Rocky. Let me just do this video. Right, let's go on to the show from last night that I watched. The Frank Warren show. Old Fish Eyes Frank. Return of the Fish. O2 Arena, Greenwich, London. First of all, I noted that it looked empty. They didn't look like there were anybody there. But, the fights on there were good, but as I've just pointed out to you in my previous video, the Jeddah show that everybody keeps digging out, right, all you casuals who keep saying, It was a crap show, Billy Dibbs crapping, Samuel Peters passed his sell-by date. That might have been true. But not one fight on that show, not one fighter out of 20 fighters had a losing record. Now look at this here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now oh, that's not bad then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Out of thirty out of 13 fights, Frank Warren, out of 26 guys on the show, okay I'll sort it, out of 26 guys on the show, right, 6 had losing records, so that's a good show, but I did say at the beginning of the week that this show that Frank Warren put on were a good show, but the only thing for me that spoilt it was the fact that David Hay, John Rawlins and Barry Jones they for me spoilt the show and this bias we've got bias now in boxing with and it's, a, it's becoming a massive problem with shows even even some of the shows that I've seen, some of Den's shows, the bias is unbelievable. Unbelievable. It is what it is, isn't it? But when you've got David A coming out with comments about Sonny Edwards like you were coming out with, I'm just gonna, and, and you know, going on about Liam Williams and, and then he's going on about Joe Joyce. Let me just go through this and then I'm going to. Uh, and then I'm going to point a few things out to you people at home who don't understand it like act like other people understand it. Right, welterweight Mickey Burke on his debut, weighing in above welterweight by the way, beat Michael Williams on points who were 2 and 15. Lightweight Mark Chamberlain, who were a pound and a quarter over lightweight, 2 and 0. He won on points against Sergio Gonzalez, who were 10, 16, and 5. Super featherweight Jake Petit. Five and oh. He beat Elvis Gwillen, nine, fifty-four, and four. Heavyweight Jonathan Palata, 5 0. He made short work of Ferenc. Zal Zalek, 21, 74, and 7. Bantamweight Dennis McCann, 1 0. Beat Jason Lorias on points. He was 7 and 6, his record. Welterweight Florian Marco under uh, under the fifth. Uh, welterweight Florian Marco three and zero stopped Tommy Broadband in the fourth round. He was eight and five. Willie Hutchinson, a light heavyweight, eight and zero. Beat jo Josip Perkovic. 5, 9 and 1. I want to see Willie Hutchinson fight somebody with a winning record. 
because he's only beat one guy with a winning record out of his 10 fights. So, Willie Hutchinson, let's see you fight somebody who can fucking hit back. Right. Middleweight, Amza Shirez, 8 and 0. Made short work of Scott James in round one, who were four, five, and one. See, that's a losing record. Sonny Edwards, super flyweight. Right, this is where I'm going to stop here. Right, Sonny Edwards. Sonny Edwards, right, sparred Tommy Frank twice, Dennis's fighter. He's a bit leery. He's got skills to burn. But David Hay lost his shit with that microphone. David Hay is the king of bullshit. We know that, don't we? He is the king of bullshit. David Hay lost his shit when he got that microphone and he started waxing lyrical about Sonny Edwards. Sonny Edwards couldn't get that guy out of there last night. He could not get him out there now. David A were talking about him like he's pound for pound and he's ready to f beat Yafai and do this and do that. Sonny Edwards last night, right, was in with a guy ranked 93 in the fucking world and he couldn't stop him. Get with the fucking program. Sonny Edwards is not King fucking Kong. Yeah, he's a good little fighter and, you know, he might have a bit more in his locker than Tommy Frank at the moment, but he is... He's not King Kong now. Let me tell you a little story, right? Barry McGuigan years ago were knocking everybody out. And Jim McDonnell was saying, I want to fight him, I want to fight him, I want to fight him. But do you know what they did? Jim McDonnell's team at the time said, Mickey Duff said, What we'll do, Jim, is knocking everybody out, so we'll go around the outside. And then we'll meet. Now, Sonny Edwards is not knocking anybody out, is he? Not knocking anybody out. But he's schooling guys and practicing his art. So why don't Dennis, Tommy Frank and Glyn Rhodes go around the outside and then get him when time's right? And that's good logical business, isn't it? Nobody's chickening it out, are they? Barry McGuigan, when he fought Jim... McDonnell got stopped, didn't he? Right, he got stopped. Yeah, Barry McGuigan would have won at his peak, but the timing wasn't right then, was it? And I don't think the timing's right for Tommy Frank now. But yeah, I've got people saying, oh, why won't Dennis make the fight like Ozzy Smith? People like that. Probably because they want to they build the fight up, and maybe, who knows, Tommy's, what is he, two and a half year older than Sonny? Maybe Tommy's not as schooled fighter as Sonny Edwards, who knows? But is Sonny Edwards going to sell a ticket? No, he doesn't sell a ticket, does he? Tommy sells all tickets if they do fight. But Davy Day were losing his shit over Sonny Edwards, and it was a bit embarrassing. He's overrated, in my opinion. He's good, but he's not that good, if you know what I mean. Archie Sharp. Super featherweight. He beat Jordan McClory on points over ten rounds. Jordan McClory is eighteen and five and one. Well, he was before yesterday. That five will now be a six. Then you've got Big Joe Joyce, the heavyweight, nine and zero, oh, fighting Bryant Jennings. Now. That went, that's, that went 12 rounds. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the referee was shocking, Steve Gray. But everybody knows Steve Gray's a Warren man, don't they? People say Terry O'Connor's a Warren man. Yeah, he is. But Steve Gray is the biggest Warren man in boxing. You know, in boxing, certain referees have certain labels, don't they? You know, about which promoter they, they get on with. Steve Gray is a Frank Warren man. He has been all his life from day one. So, but, I had Joe Joyce winning the fight, but I thought he was closer. I thought Joe should have had a point took off at some point. Not Bryant Jennings. I thought that point took off a harsh, but that point, it, it, it gave him a cushion, didn't it? If, if, the, if it were close. 
Do you know what I mean? Because the referee must have thought it were close to take that point off. Now, Joe Joyce had £30 on Jennings and about 5 inch in height. £30. It was like an heavyweight just coming forward and just throwing bombs, but... I thought David Hay were losing his shit over it because Joe Joyce, in my opinion, got exposed. Joe Joyce got exposed. That brings me to Liam Williams, middleweight. David A lost his shit over him as well, didn't he? David A loses his shit over, over guys because he's there. He's paid by BT Sport to keep his face on the TV and get his son out there because without a camera, what has David A got going for himself without a camera? He's got fuck all else going for him, has he? What? Who was he promoting? He's managing Derek Chisora and that's it. So he's up Eddie Hearn's arse and he's now up Frank Warren's arse. David A is a whore. He's, a, he's in both camps. He's in Sky's camp and BT camp. Could you imagine being having David A as your co-accused? You'd be in dock, wouldn't you? And David A would be giving evidence against you, wouldn't he? He'd want to be on both sides at fence, wouldn't he? David A is a fucking whore, let me tell you. You're a whore. Don't like him. Gone off him. Good fight though, but he is a whore. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Liam Williams. Now, now everybody in the home, everybody on the home side of the fights, right? Thirteen home fighters were all undefeated except Liam Williams. But Liam Williams made short work of this guy, Karamanko. Well, let me tell you about this guy here. He's had 36 fights and he's stopped four guys. 36 fights and he's stopped four. How many fours go into 36? There's fucking nine. Nine. So Liam Williams has just beat a guy with a 9% KO ratio. It says 11 on here. Should be nine. Four into 36 goes nine times. Nine fours are 36. So Liam Williams has beat a guy with a 9% KO ratio who couldn't punch for fucking Toffee. And he's ranked what? 56 in the fucking world. We've got a guy here ranked 56 in the world. And Dominic Ingalls losing his shit jumping about the ring like a raving fucking lunatic. And they're calling out Golovkin. David A's coming out with stuff like who want Golovkin and these are the fights that we that, that, that uh, he should be in and Dominic Ingalls chatting Golovkin on social media. Fucking Golovkin against Liam Williams. Fucking I like Liam Williams. I like him a lot. But we saw what Liam Williams were about against Beefy Smith, didn't we? He got out toughed. Once you put it on Liam Williams, he don't like it, does he? He don't like it once it gets the going gets tough. He's all right blowing these fucking. F is he? Is he French? Him that guy. He's just beat. He's just beat a Frenchman, hasn't he? He's just beat a Frenchman, ranked 56 in the world, right? France. He beats a guy ranked 56 in the world and people are losing the fucking shit over him. People are losing the shit over him. So let me just point a few things out to you here, right? Let me just show you a few things. Right, this this is the top top 11 guys above Liam. Liam Williams is ranked number 12 on box rec, right? Would Liam Williams beat Rob Brandt? 50-55. Would he beat Martin Murray? I think he'd beat Martin Murray. He's on the slide. He's ranked 10th. Would he beat Derry Vyenchenko? 50-55. Would he beat Marata? 50-50. Would he beat Lemieux? No. Would he beat Andrade? No. Jeff Horn, Charlo, Jacobs, Golovkin, uh, uh, Alvarez? No. They don't. So Liam Williams, what Dominic Ingalls is going to want to do with him, is going to want to get him abroad, because Liam Williams doesn't sell a ticket. He will be going abroad. If they're going to go the WBC route, they're going to be going abroad. They're going to get paid. Dominic Ingalls is going to get paid. He'll get paid, Dominic Ingalls, I can assure you about that. 
they'll get paid but they'll be taking him abroad to lose he will be going abroad to lose Liam Williams should be staying at 154 and trying to get a world title forgetting this this middleweight stuff he should be correcting that Beefy Smith first loss he should have corrected it in the second fight. That's what he should be doing, correcting things like that. But he is a great fighter, but beating the 56 best guy in the world from France, who is called Karim Watt, he's just beat Karim Akor, right? Who's the second best guy in France? He's not even the fucking best guy in France. He's not even the best guy in France. He's the second best guy in France. How they got that pass for a WBC silver? I fucking don't know, mate. I don't know. I don't know, but Liam chopped him down. He did what he had to do with him, so fair play, but... This is how I look at it. I've studied Liam Williams' career and I think he's a fantastic fighter, very technical, very good, very quick, but he lacks that. He's got the heart of a breadcrumb. I saw it in Liam, I saw him unfold like an onion in the BP Smith fight. He had the fight won. His corner made a mistake and cost him the win in the first fight, but... He had the fight won, they should have stopped that fight and gone to the referees for, that, the, for the head class, but they didn't, did they? That's how they got a rematch, that's how old Fisheye's played up a rematch, didn't he? So, bad decision by his corner, but also, he's got to take some responsibility in quitting. Now, once you quit, you quit, that's it, it's in you. Some boxers fight like cowards, like Steffi Bull, he fights like a coward, doesn't he? Some boxers quit. Once you quit, it's always there. Oh, that's my opinion. What's the guy called now? Uh, the guy who was in the, the film. I forgot his name now. He were Victor Ortiz. How many times has he quit, Victor Ortiz? Once it's in you, it's in you. You'll see it with Anthony Joshua. It's in his makeup. There's nothing wrong with that, because they're still getting in there. They're braver than us, aren't they, but... Once it's in your makeup to quit, you'll quit. So, but the talking Golovkin, Davy Day were losing his mind over Liam Williams' win. Losing his mind, he's beat the second best guy in France and the 56th best guy in the fucking world. They were jumping around like they'd won fucking Wimbledon. They were like Beyond Borg when he beat Nastasi. So, no, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't having that. I ain't having it. I'm not having it at all. I'm not having it. So it is what it is, isn't it? I ain't I, I ain't having it. I ain't having it. Which brings me to the main fight of the evening. Dubois eleven and O against Gorman sixteen and O. Uh I thought the fight lived up to its billing. Uh, I've heard a story today that Gorman didn't have the better of him in the spars that they had. And he was a 17-year-old kid at the time, Dubois, but he didn't have the better of him. But why Gorman was shouting off that he did have the better of him, Dubois should have come back and said, no, you didn't, but he let him have it. That's called selling the fight, isn't it? When it come down to it, the guy with the short, with the the guy with <coughs> the shorter arms than Floyd Mayweather, Nathan Gorman, he got the shortest arms out of the top 50 heavyweights in the world. Should fight a cruiserweight, shouldn't he? Nathan Gorman, nice guy, but I don't think he's British level. A lot of people bought into this. He's technically good. He's a traveller. He's he can do this. He can do that. I don't mean shit. That don't mean shit, right? That doesn't mean shit that he's a traveller. And it don't mean shit when you're going up against a fucking beast of a man. That guy is a strong boy. That guy bullies Dave Allen in sparring, Daniel Dubois. And we're talking three years ago. He was bullying Dave Allen, who is a bully in the ring. Big, strong man. Dave Allen couldn't budge him in clinchers. Joshua, Dave Allen can walk him. Because he's big and hollow, but... Dubois, 
big, big, strong man. Big brute of a man, brute force. And I think that he'll go all the way. He's a British champion now. Dave Allen's not won a British title, but he's talking about fighting Joshua in two fights. Gorman's not won a British title. So, Debar is in the mix now. He is in the mix, and he will go the WBO route now. It'll probably be WBO European heavyweight belt. Something like that now. They'll go that route. They'll, not, they'll keep him away f from Caballel. Who, in my opinion, is bogeyman, isn't he? Nobody mentions Caballel, do they? At the moment. So, but it is what it is, isn't it? So, but on the whole, the show, I felt, was... Get him, Rocky. Get him, Rocky. The show I felt was an eight and a half out of ten, and I thought the the Jeddah show I thought that were a, were a six and a half. But but Frank Warren put a good show on last night. Nobody can knock that show. But only thing that spoils it stops it getting a ten. There's the bias from every time. Jennings, Bryant Jennings did any good work. The TV commentators they never they, ne they just watered it down into into Joyce. They turned it into a Joyce feast, you know. And it's like I said, they were, the commentators and the pundits were getting carried away with Liam Williams as win. He beat a guy 56 in world with a 9% KO ratio. Get a fucking grip. Do me a favour. Fucking, I couldn't believe what I was fucking seeing, man. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Yeah, he did what he had to do, but let's see Liam Williams in a fight. I mean, for example, let's have a look at who Liam Williams' his best win is. 20, 21 and 2. We a draw. Who is Liam Williams' his best win? Mark Efron? But vacant British title, you'd have to say Gary Kakoran. Uh, is that it? Ronnie Efren. You could maybe say Ronnie Efren. Ronnie Efren were red hot at the time. Mark Efren, Ronnie Efren. I mean, he drew with Tyam Bove. Ah, oh, that worked because of head clashes, won it? But as far as I'm concerned, Liam Williams has beat who? His best wins, Mark Efron, on paper. He got beat by Beefy Smith. His best two wins are Gary Kakoran and Mark Efron. That is it. But yet they're talking about Golovkin for Liam Williams. The statistics are here. Liam Williams box wreck. Gary Kakoran. 15 and 0, we beat him. That was his best win up to fighting Mark Efron. Because he lost the Beefy Smith fights. So why are they talking Golovkin? Because Dominic Ingle and Liam are going to get paid and Frank Warren. They're going to put him on a plane and they're going to go... <whistles> pull a low load around for money and come back with an L. That's what's going to happen. So Davy Day... And all them commentators waxing lyrical with their bias and their tongues up fucking their arseholes at BT Sport need to give their fucking heads a shake. Liam Williams is a British stroke European level fighter. He's not in Golovkin's league. He will be going there to get a payday. He will not win a world title, but like I said, they lost the fucking shit, didn't they, last night over it? But it is what it is, it's just opinions, it's my opinion, I like to go by statistics. I'm a stat man, and that's how I base my life, on numbers. And I've got a bit of a thing about numbers, haven't I? But I like Liam Williams, he's a nice kid, I've had Texas off him, he's a good kid, but I don't think he wins a world title unless he gets very lucky with a vacant belt. I don't think he wins one, so... Peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing, it's a fantastic sport. Boom.